My dear students, today we will be taking up microbiology and from the experience I've got, I've seen a lot many questions being asked from microbiology and the most important topics I will be dealing first. Today I have come up with a topic and that is Staph aureus. Now as far as your need PG examinations, FMG examinations are concerned and even the MBBS students who are just going through their studies, they need to know what is important from their PG perspective. Now, as far as staph aureus is concerned, I will be dealing with some of the important points first. Now, the organisms, there are a lot many organisms and you expect many questions from these and you have to exactly know what you should know about these organisms. So specifically about staph aureus, which we will be studying. Now over here, you have to remember some of the very important points. Now, as far as staph aureus is concerned, you have to remember that it is a virulent organism. So there are, it is one of the most virulent organisms which is present. And it is a cause of a lot of morbidity and mortality, which will be coming in due course of time. Now, as far as staph aureus is concerned, you have to remember very important the microbiological characteristics of these organisms. And first of all, you have to remember which are the gram positive and which are the gram negative. So as far as gram staining is concerned, we have to remember that staph aureus is a gram positive organism. In addition to that, it derives its name because the peculiar arrangement, what is that? These cocci, they are just clustered in the form of grapes, a bunch of grapes. And that is, you can see in the figure over here, that how the staph aureus colonies just appear on the microscopic examination. So they are grape-like clusters. They are clustered in the form of grapes. Now, other things which are important are the motility, the spore formation, and you have to remember that non, non-motile, non-sporing, and whether they are aerobic or anaerobic. Staph is characterized by the features like non-motile, non-sporing, and anaerobic. In action, as far as the fermentation of certain substances is concerned, you have to remember that the staph aureus ferments glucose into lactic acid. Very important. So gram positivity, non-motile, non-sporing, and anaerobic, which are the important characteristics which you have to remember. Now, how you differentiate staph from different uh, bacteria and from the staph aureus from other uh, group of uh, staff. Now we have to remember that staph aureus is catalase positive. Now as far as catalase is concerned, it is an enzyme and this is what differentiates it from streptococci. Streptococci also happen to be very important group of organisms and you have in certain cases to differentiate between staph and streptococci. So catalase positivity is one important factor which distinguishes staph from streptococcus. Now in action, it is also coagulase positive. So two enzyme positivities, catalase and coagulase. Now in action, it ferments mannitol. So that's one important and characteristic feature on uh, agar is that they form golden yellow colonies. Very important, you have to remember, because sometimes you are asked about media and what type of colonies they produce. So as far as our staff voice is concerned, by now we have come to know it is gram positive, non-motile, non-sporing, ferments, mannitol, catalase positive and coagulase positive and characteristic golden yellow colors. Repetition is important because repetition facilitates your memory and that's what I strongly believe in. So over here, this image based question, over here golden yellow colors seen on blood agar plate. So this is very important. Now, normally you could consider staph as pathogenic, but you have to remember that it is a normal common soil. It is a part of the normal flora and it is present normally in the nasal passages. It is present on the skin and it is present in the mucosa. So you have to remember that it's a normal common soil present. And we'll come to the conclusion later on how the staph infection spread from these nasal passages from the skin or from the mucosa. Now, this is what I was telling you. Now, how the infections occur and how the transmission occurs. Transmission is by from the human uh, lesions, wherever there are the lesions, 
it can share the fomites, the respiratory tract and the skin. So you can get contaminated through contact by the skin, through the respiratory tract and through the fomites. So this thing you have to remember and it's very important. I will be coming at the end, MRSA and the uh, transmission, that is something else. Now, what and why is that? Pathogenic. Now, the pathogenic capacity of Staph aureus is just, a, just due to factors because of multiple toxins. So, there are multiple factors, extracellular factors and toxins, which are responsible for the invasiveness of Staph aureus. And yeah, as we just mentioned, coagulase. Coagulase is one important enzyme which is responsible for the pathogenicity and the characteristic yellow pigment and hemolysis. So hemolysis is one important characteristic feature of staph aureus. Now why we study staph? Because staph has got a lot of clinical importance and that's important. Now first of all you have to remember that there is this food poisoning and food poisoning can be due to various various organisms. But you have to remember characteristically, the first important fact is that staph aureus is a very important organism which can cause food poisoning. And the food poisoning by staph aureus is acute, is usually acute because it occurs within six to eight hours of food intake. It is not that there's a long later period of uh, poisoning. So it occurs acute. One of the important causes of acute food poisoning is staph aureus. And you have to remember this one thing. Pantan valentine leukocytin. It has been asked multiple times. It has been asked multiple times. What is this pantan valentine leukocytin? Basically, it is one of the toxins which just destroys the leukocytes. And it is one of the important components of the it is one of the very important components of the food poison. Now, dairy products, milk and milk pastures are very important as far as food poisoning by staph aureus is concerned. So this is very important you have to remember that staph aureus is a very important organism causing acute food poisoning within six to eight hours of ingestion of contaminated food. Now, classically, coming to the main important point, staph aureus. So staph aureus is an important organism because it causes several infections. And what are these infections? First thing you remember that in an orthopedic clinic, you might be having a patient who comes with pain, acute onset of pain, tenderness, inflammation, and it might be an infection of a bone, any bone, a vertebra, a long bone, and that clinical condition is called as acute osteomyelitis. I'm not talking about chronic osteomyelitis. And you have to remember that acute osteomyelitis is not well picked up in radiographs. I mean to say X's in the initial stage because X's do not detect acute osteomyelitis. For that, you have to have a high level of clinical suspicion because acute osteomyelitis can be a bit fatal. It can progress rapidly and CT scan or MRIs the best pick up acute osteomyelitis. So a patient can be presenting in an orthopedic clinic with pain, tenderness, inflammation, fever, and then once you do a CT scan, you might be having a bony lesion in the form of acute osteomyelitis. Over here in the figure, you can have a look. This can be an image-based question. You can see over here, this is a, already an arrow drawn, and I am just pinpointing it in a more a precise manner you can see that this is a vertebral osteomyelitis you can see the vertebra over here from above downwards and you can see that there is some change in the density of the vertebra and this is where acute osteomyelitis focus has set in and it has been picked up by this scan which is not a, a normal radiogram okay so this is how it presents so what i have to remember Acute osteomyelitis, the commonest causes staph aureus. So we are done with acute osteomyelitis. Number two, acute mastitis, a female who can be having an inflamed tender breast due to multiple factors, due to lactic lactation, due to unhygienic 
depressed maintenance or many other factors and you have to remember that this female can present with pain swelling tenderness in her breast and this is a case of acute mastitis acute bacterial mastitis and the commonest organism is staph aureus again so two things acute osteomyelitis acute mastitis now i will just leave botrymycosis for the time being and i will come to furunculosis and carbuncle basically follicles hair follicles hair follicles can get inflamed inflamed and there can be tenderness in the sides of the hair follicles and that clinical condition is called as folliculitis or furunculosis this is more common especially in diabetics with impaired blood glucose levels and once there is a big follicle and especially at the shoulder at the back that clinical condition which gives rise to a boggy swelling in the shoulder or especially the back that is given the name as carbuncle again again i tell you that is very common in diabetics and in case patients are having recurrent folliculitis patients having carbuncles you should evaluate the patient for impaired glucose tolerance or diabetes mellitus i'm not talking about diabetes insufficiency over here so this is to be remembered now I come back to the point I did not uh, mention in the first instance, botromycosis. So what is botromycosis? Basically, botromycosis happens to be a chronic bacterial inflammation. And staph aureus happens to be one of the commonest causes of botromycosis. There can be other organisms which can be involved like pseudomonas, but here you have to remember that one of the important organisms which causes botromycosis is staph aureus. And what is this botromycosis? It is a chronic inflammation. And in fact, you have to remember very precisely chronic granulomatous inflammation. And it is characterized by the presence of folliculites, presence of crusts, presence of patchules, presence of chronic separation, and presence of what I already mentioned, granulomatous lesions. And you have to remember that there can be presence of fissures, fistula, ulcers, and sinuses. So this is more progressive. This is more uh, progressive and the lesions can be deeper and the lesions can be more widespread and the lesions can be more severe. So botromycosis is not a fungal inflammation. It is a, a chronic bacterial inflammation which is more severe and which is most frequently caused by staph aureus. So that is done botromycosis. Now, so we have acute osteomyelitis, acute mastitis, botromycosis, furunculosis, and carbuncle. Now, in addition, you have to remember that sometimes a patient can come very sick, and this clinical condition is called as acute endoca endocarditis. Now, you have to remember that endocarditis is the inflammation of the valves of the heart and the subacute as well as acute. The subacute endocarditis, most common organism, is streptococcus. But I am talking about acute bacterial endocarditis, and in here, a patient progresses very rapidly towards deterioration, and it should be identified at a very early stage. And the most important organism causing acute bacterial endocarditis, I am not talking about SABE, subacute bacterial endocarditis, I am talking about ABE acute bacterial endocarditis. So the most important organism causing acute bacterial endocarditis is staph aureus. Very important. Now, there's another condition which we give the name as tropical pyomyocytes or tropical polymyocytes. Now, as is evident from the name, tropic, poly or pyo. So we have sometimes to use a common sense and intelligence. Tropical, it is most common in tropics. Number two, pyomyocytes. Pyo means pus. Pus and myocytes means inflammation of the muscle. Or polymyocytes. Poly means multiple, multiple muscles. So what is this term? Tropical pyomyocytes or tropical polymyocytes. So as this clinical condition is concerned, it is characterized by inflammation of the muscles. There is muscle weakness, there is muscular pain, there is muscular stiffness or tenderness, there is muscular inflammation, and you can be having abscesses within the muscles. Though this clinical condition is very difficult to diagnose, up to and unless you do not have an idea about tropical 
pyomyositis. So this clinical condition, again, one of the most important organisms which is implicated in the position of tropical pyomyositis or polymyositis is staph aureus. So this is important. Now I left psychosis barbie in between. I left psychosis barbie with a deliberate purpose. Now I was talking about folliculitis, folliculosis. Now as far as the psychosis barbie is concerned, sometimes a male especially, he goes for immediate shaving and after shaving what he can get, he can get deep-seated. Here I am using the term not superficial, deep-seated folliculites. The follicles will be inflamed again but this time it will be a deep folliculites and there will be patellopustular lesions. That means more advanced feature and the follicular involvement is more deeper here and there can be itchy, tenderness, pus emanating from the follicles and you can be having a serous fluid discharge from the follicles as well as pus. And what's important, the psychosis barbie can be cosmetically disfiguring. Why? Because it can lead to a greater degree of scarring, a greater degree of hypertrophy of the lesions and what it can lead is keloid formation. And you know what's keloid set in, it is a bit of a cosmetic disfigurement and a bit difficult to treat. So this psychosis barbie is important and one of the most important organisms which causes psychosis barbie again is staph aureus. So these things you have to remember. Now, uh, currently what uh, and why staph aureus has gained a more important role is because we have got this thing what we call as MRSC. Methicillin resistant staph aureus. Basically, staph aureus previously were very sensitive to methicillin, which is a drug, and MRSA strains are important because MRSA can progress much rapidly and they can cause abscesses. The clinical deterioration will be more there, and the current focus is on prevention of MRSA spread. And the most effective manner in which the MRSA strains can be prevented is by a very effective hand washing techniques. So that is why there is a protocol in most of the hospitals of effective hand washing, and that is said to just prevent MRSA infection spreading rapidly. So we can have MRSA in the form of epidural abscesses, which need surgical or even in osteomyelitis or any of the country in which staph aureus is implicated, you can have these MRS strains coming in and producing a more rapidly evolving disease condition. So this is something you have to remember because this is very important from a healthcare and a community context, MRC. In social and preventive medicines, you will be coming uh, across the effective modalities by which we can just prevent the spread of MRS strains. So just to wind up, you have just, um, I think, uh, gained enough knowledge from this uh, class of mine as far as the staph aureus is concerned, what the microbiological characteristics of staph aureus are and why the staph aureus comes into role as far as the disease conditions are concerned. So this is a class uh, where we have just mixed in microbiology along with medicine and surgical specialties because acute endocarditis will be just pertaining to medicine Acute osteomyelitis will be a domain of the orthopedician. Acute mastitis will be the domain of a surgeon. And pharyngosis, carbuncle, psychosis, barbie, they will be in the domain of a dermatologist. So basically there are no boundaries in medical sciences and this is how these things gel up and come together. And this is the concept we have to learn that we have to do an integrated teaching and this is the way we study staph aureus and other organisms. I wish you best of luck in your examinations and I hope that these classes of mine will be helping you in your preparation for whatsoever examinations you are taking, especially NEET PG, FMG, INICT and your day-to-day NBC examinations. Thanks a lot.